Okay, folks, it's uh, the superstar body, Nick Aldis. We're going to have a Mike's book review. We're going to have to turn the light off. Sorry for those that wish I had better lighting. I am doing this um, book review. I did read the book, finished it tonight. Been reading it for just about maybe 10 days. And I'll uh, give Nick Aldis credit. I tore through his book. Uh, for me, I've got so many books I'm reading at any given time. I've also been listening to the audio big, b book, uh, Matthew McConaughey, Green Lights, uh, which is another story. But for my son, Donovan Patrick Aldis, everything I do is to make your life better. That's the dedication. Uh, Nick goes through, uh, he breaks the book down into three main parts, part one, part two, part three. Here is the table of contents, train, eat, live. Train, eat, live. Dare I say, Nick, perhaps if you write another addition to this, you could make it a full acronym of TELL, train, eat, live, love. You could add a whole section of love if you wanted to and give us your Nick all this thoughts on love. Uh, the training section goes from page 39 to 118. The eat section goes from 127 to 192. And the live uh, goes from 197 to 216 with a special uh, about nine pages on the sense of science of sleep. So this book, 2015, Nick, I believe, was still in the, the midst of his uh, total nonstop action wrestling career. Uh, there are some nice photographs in the book. We'll just take a quick gander. He's got a nice photo of uh, one of the ladies of wrestling that we all used to love and idolize and maybe still do. Um, where is she? But uh, her, you remember her? And I think she has a little section, Brooke Adams. He's got a lot of guest writers in this book. Mickey James is the first one who would go on to become his wife. I don't know if they were married at the time. Maybe they were, since the book is dedicated to his son. Uh, Nick doesn't get too into his personal life in this book, and he says that at the beginning. Uh, this book is meant as a helper to you, me, or anyone else who reads it more so than a Nick Aldis biography. So if you're looking for the detailed history of Nick Aldis, you won't quite get that. And Nick states early on in the book that he's um, still in his late 20s. So he didn't think that someone still in their late 20s when he wrote this, that anyone would really want to read just a bio of them or an auto bio. Always found it interesting that autobiography is a longer term for a biography written by the actual person. It just seems like odd to me that like the longer term is for a book written about the person funny that I'm wearing this triple H shirt for other reasons because I did the podcast guest spot tonight on Dan and Benny in the ring discussing WWE I wanted to wear this shirt it's kind of a mockery of triple H or a commentary and I know that Nick Aldis has never wrestled in the WWE he's made his living elsewhere um you know some really interesting things in this book I would say that this book which is from the UK, it's uh, 2015 pitch. You're not gonna get stuff about the National Wrestling Alliance. You're not gonna get stuff about Billy Corgan or wrestling Cody Rhodes a couple of times or any of that stuff, or even the NWA World Heavyweight title with Tim Storm. This book was written just before all that started to happen, I believe. So you're really gonna have to, uh, you know, it's kind of fun if you're you know, a TNA fan, total nonstop action wrestling to think about the time frame that Nick wrote this thing. There is some mentions of Dixie Carters and so forth, but really it's about the train, eat, live. Uh, I found this book, um, give him credit, a subscriber, Mark T, uh, Mark with a C begins last name T, had recommended and suggested I do an analysis of Nick Aldis and the National Wrestling Alliance which got me to Nick's own website to see what he had to say about himself, which got me to Nick's book. So, uh, and Nick, just so you know, buddy, in case Nick Aldis sees this, Nick's book actually got read by me. It's, it superseded all the other print books I have. I mean, I have tons of books in my car, in my home, on a bookshelf, 
tons of books that I've been meaning to read, volumes and volumes, and Nick's book jumped to the head of the pack. And uh, I think when reading this book, I could actually hear, in, you know, in some mystical way, the voice of Nick Aldis, uh, the national treasure, in my, hear, in my ear, telling me these uh, secrets and thoughts. Some stuff, I don't want to misquote Nick at all, you know, but I did see some stuff that kind of raised a curious eyebrow for me. Not that I'm doubting him, but he's talking about different levels of cardio work and suggesting that if you're doing, I don't know, I don't just basically saying, I think what I heard, what I interpreted was if you're doing like real low levels of cardio, like just basic walking, you could be like, uh, and you're doing too much of that, you could be tearing down some muscle tissue, which I found was interesting. Not an excuse not to do the cardio, but he's really, what he's really getting at is you gotta do spike high levels of cardio in there to really get the gains of cardio. Uh, also, Nick gets kind of, the term I guess would be granular, which I don't even know if I like that term, but really uh, specific, that's a better word, about, um, you know, vitamins and, and aminos and proteins. And I guess I would say that if you are a guy in your teens, 20s, 30s, you know, maybe even your 40s or, or whatever, but really for guys probably 20s and 30s who are really serious about lifting weights or starting to, like this book would probably be a great primer for someone who's going to look into a life of fitness and exercise and muscle building. This book would be a great place to start because what I like about Nick's book is he's not trying to prescribe a cure-all, uh, one-size-fits-all workout regimen. He's basically giving you the layout, the tools to make your own system, which I thought that was pretty refreshing. So many of these exercise books give you these uh, workout routines and expect everybody to be able to do the same thing. Nick, however, just kind of breaks it down nicely in this graph, if I can find it, uh, and basically kind of gives you your build your own uh, how to build a workout thing, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, you know, I think it was pretty good. And then he, at the beginning of the book, I like, I really like Nick's approach to this thing. And he has no co-writer listed or no ghostwriter. Well, of course, ghostwriters are typically not listed, but I did feel like Nick wrote this himself. Seems like a smart enough guy to write a, a nice book like this. Uh, prologue, he's talking about being a kid and his exposure to pro wrestling. Um, the Ten to Remember, uh, he's got a quote from Ben Franklin, is number five, by failing to prepare, you prepare to fail. And all types of cool stuff. Uh, you might have seen the Superstar Spotlight with Mickey James. He's got some other people. Rob Terry, Kurt Angle, and others have little insights. He allows other people to come in and write, you know, little passages. Not not as much as Diamond Dallas Page's book, if you ever read that one. Uh, but the train, eat, live principle. He just seems like a cool guy, you know. Like Nick, if you weren't a fan of Nick Aldis's before, you probably will be coming out of this book. Um, he really shoots some stuff down, like, a quote, I don't want to get too big, quote. He shoots that down. Diet exercise 50-50. I once was working with a nutritionist who said that diet was 80%, exercise was 20. Never seemed to really make sense to me, and Nick's more of a 50-50 guy. Don't ignore the fundamentals. Uh, talks about trapezius muscles. Uh, he talks some real gems in here. Interestingly enough, typically when I read any book, I use a highlighter, uh, the eat principles. Okay. Uh, here he says something like a crust eaten in peace is better than a banquet partaken in anxiety ASAP. Forget calories. Nick is very against calorie counting. He explains why, but he's just not a proponent of counting calories. Quality protein is the key, a big protein guy, but he does make an emphasis on uh, protein. Eat real food. He cautions against dependence on, on uh, he drinks protein shakes, but he's cautious against 
too many protein bars, for instance. He talks about the different types of fats, understanding carbohydrates and insulin. I think what Nick does in a very succinct way, I think this book was just about 207, 214 pages followed by another uh, 10 pages of glossary. The glossary is pretty good too. Uh, what I liked about this thing was he's not claiming to give you all the answers to the world's problems in one book. It's almost like this book is a starting point for you to go out and do research into other things. And you might be saying, well, why would I want that? Just give me all the answers, Nick. Well, he does provide websites and links and so forth that if they're still current, this was 2015, now it's 2021, uh, that if those websites are still current, you know, you can find that information online and probably most of the websites are still current or something similar. Uh, overall, I enjoyed the book. You know, I told you some of my daily videos it inspired me in some regard to get back into the gym. I've gone to the LA Fitness here in Florida. Um, it's always interesting when some franchise has like a, a city name, like LA Fitness in Florida, you know, but... Uh, we're not in LA, we're in Florida. So why couldn't it be called Florida Fitness? Well, what can you do? So, <laughs> but um, yeah, I've been inspired. I think I've gone four times in the last week. And just, I, I used to have a thing, Nick, that you could share with your readers, you know, uh, big days and dig days. There are days that are big days when you feel you have three or four hours or two hours or you have a big maximum amount of time. You have your big protein shake your you know your eight eight glasses your eight eight ounce glasses of water like all your water all your protein all your shakes all your time and your rest and your all that good shit and you have like a nice big day a nice workout well that doesn't happen for many people most days so you have what I like to call the dig days and for me today was a dig day it was I had just done this podcast from 7 30 to 9 15 it's 9 15 i know the gym in my hood closes at 10 p.m it takes me 15 minutes to get there i get to the parking lot i'm tweetering with uh johnny z and kevin castle about the von erics and so forth on twitter wars and then by the time i actually get into the gym it's 9 40 i leave there at 9 55 i got 15 minutes of exercise in but i got i got some bench presses in i stretched my back I did that um, knee lift thing, that machine where you lift your knees up, and I crunched my back, my upper back. I got a nice pop, nice crunch to relax the back. Stretched my back, did the bench press. I did some shoulder fly things, like the shitting, not the shitting, the, the sitting shoulder flies things. There was an attractive blonde in the gym that I looked at, female. So uh, I did a lot in those 15 minutes. I just told you, I mean, I did the bench press. I did the stretching of the back. I did the, the shoulder stick -a -doos. I did a lot of things in a, in, a, in a quick period of time because there was not a lot of other people in the gym. As a funny aside, this gym happens to have a basketball court and like th there was this big pickup game. You see like these big adult scary men playing basketball. They're all sweaty. And then there was like a pack of maybe, you know, 14 or 15 year old guys uh, playing basketball with them, kind of in over their head, it would seem. But they were trying to play ball with these older dudes. And <laughs> then the fucking mom comes around, you know, like the middle-aged suburban mom comes. I mean, just so stereotypical, no offense to the mom. Sure, she was a nice lady, but she comes over to, like, yell at one of the teenage boys. And she's opening up the fucking door wide open to the basketball court and she's singling out her son and when's this gonna be over we gotta go home the gym closes in 15 minutes <laughs> i could see the teenage son's face in horror as his mother was humiliating him just by her mere presence and then she's got her fucking hand on her hip like that exaggerated hand on the hip and this you could just see this poor fucking kid's face just melt in embarrassment as his mother was humiliating him and taking a pair of scissors and cutting off his testicles in front of not only his friends, but these adult men they were challenging to basketball. Just humanity at its finest, that's all. Women, especially moms, don't realize sometimes the damage they do, whether they're trying to or not. 
And then I went around and I did a few more exercises and I came back and the mom was still standing there with the fucking door wide open with her hand on her fucking hip. And it's just like, give the kid a break. Like he, the kid would rather walk home than suffer through this indignity. Anyway, um, just, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I like Nick's fucking book, you know, and Nick even says he suggests that you read his book all the way through at one point, at the opening round, read it through, even stuff that may be over your head like it was to me, to be quite frank, or quite Mike, and then go back and find the sections that you like or that you, they're pertaining to you. I did have a fucking moment there, Nick, today when reading this book, I was thus inspired because I've been seeing this... Um, protein powders at this local store like kind of this discount store they for whatever reason they have these giant bags of protein powder and i was tempted to go in there and buy it and then i'm like fuck i think nick recommends the protein powder that he eats direct from the cattle fed beef or whatever the fuck or the the grass fed beef or whatever and i'm just like god damn should i save my money from this you know discount store protein pack powder and and go online and try to find what nick is eating so i can be like nick and i just said i guess i will you know i guess i'll sacrifice a night of protein powder because i want i mean if you're gonna pay for it anyway i might be saving 20 or 30 bucks or whatever from this buying this discount stuff but if it's crap then it's crap they had this other muscle gainer protein stuff that was literally like 2,000 or 1,250 calories. Of course, Nick's not a calorie guy, so I don't know what to say about that. But, I mean, you know, he does offer some pretty interesting things here. Radical ideas that I don't think are coming out of left field. I think Nick's done the research that a lot of us haven't. And a lot of us have just bought the noise or bought the hype, so to speak. And Nick Aldis, in his uh, brilliance here... And you have to admit, the guy's in good shape. I mean, fuck. So, I mean, he knows what he's talking about. Uh, I, I enjoyed the book. You know what I mean? I, I thought it was good. I do think, once again, like, it, like a lot of things in life, folks, and I'm man enough to admit it, the younger you start with some of this shit, the better off you'll be. You know, take it from Uncle Mike. You know, some things in life you wish you would have done uh, 15, 20, 25 years earlier, and you didn't. And that time is gone. You can't get it back anymore, boys. So you're fucked. You missed out. And it, it can piss you off. It can make you angry. Uh, but you try to make the most with whatever the fuck time you have left. And if you can, leave an impression on someone else's mind. Then so be it. I give Nick's book a solid A-. minus. I don't know why I give it the minus. Just for the fuck of it. Um... And I will say, subscribe to Mike Messier YouTube channel. Uh, that you should be having that Dan and Benny in the ring with guest Mike Messier discussing the possible uh, sale of the WWE and the ramifications for pro wrestling. You should be getting another video I made today. Uh, God, I made a lot of videos for you guys today. I hope you're grateful. And so on and so forth. My Braun Strowman video is picking up a lot of heat, a lot of energy. People are opinionated. And so on, and so forth, and so on, and so forth. My Taco Bell uh, instant movie or instant food review, Mike's Meals, uh, so on and so forth. I did see Cruella yesterday. I did do a video, and then uh, there were some reasons for me to kind of look into it and edit it, maybe do a different video, something I, that's never really happened before, uh, but just some circumstances beyond my control that I have to investigate. But once a fucking again, if you're this deep into the video, thanks for getting here with me. I appreciate the hardcores that stick with the videos to the very end. I would suggest uh, Nario Zakarian's uh, award-winning, Ashley Shea's award-winning performances in The Impeccable, also starting Adam Lamb from Bass. He would get an award, but uh, he hasn't gotten one yet. We'll get you one, Adam. In The Impeccable... Wrestling son, John Cronus, Eliminator John Cronus in my movie. Uh, Rejected by Reality has Balls Mahoney in it, in Mike's archives. Uh, my Rocket Man video for those countries that can see it. And so on. Vinny Paz for boxing fans. My interview, Ox Baker, one of the boys. Messier Mantra, so many great episodes. 
and um, subscribe to Mike Messier. Savannah Giamarco on Messier Mantra. Enjoy.